Welcome to Electra Online. A few days ago, a viewer asked a very interesting question. The question was as follows. If we have an object that accelerates from 1 meter per second to 7 meters per second, what, what is its average speed over the first half of the distance covered? And the reason why it's so interesting is because they don't tell you the distance covered. They don't tell you how fast or you know, how much time the object accelerates from 1 meter per second to 7 meters per second. So there seems to be not enough information given, which makes it kind of a hard problem. And so the question is, how do you even begin on a problem like this? The first thing I think about is perhaps using the graphical method, and I think that's what I'm going to try. But first, we should define what we mean by the average velocity. So in this case, we could say that the average velocity is equal to the distance divided by the time. Now in this case, it would be half the distance covered. So let's call it one half times d, where big D is the total distance divided by the time taken. Okay, so this would be equal to one half the distance divided by t sub one half, which means the time that it takes to cover half the distance. So if we graph this on a graph and we, we write a velocity, versus time graph, it will look kind of like this. So this is velocity in meters per second, and this is time, and that would be in seconds. Of course, we don't know how much time it took, and it, it accelerates from one meter per second to, let's say, seven meters per second. In this much time, let's call it t time. So we go from here to here, like this. That's what the graph would look like. There we go. And what we do know about the velocity versus time graph is that the area underneath the curve represents the distance traveled, which means at some point in time, we will have traveled half the distance, which means if I draw a line, let's say this is it, then the area underneath the curve on the left side equals the area underneath the curve on the right side. So if I'm going to equate the two areas, I need to come up with shapes I can find the area for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw another dotted line like this and another dotted line like this. And now I have five different areas. I call this A1, A2, A3, A4, and A5. And so now notice that A1 plus A3 should equal A2 plus A4 plus a5 because the areas must be equal. So what we can say here is that a1 plus a3 must equal a2 plus a4 plus a5. Now to be able to equate those areas I need some relationships. For example, I can call this distance x. And that means that this distance here would be t minus x. I can call this distance right here, I can call that y, which means that this distance here would be 6 minus y because the height from there to there is 6, and so 6 minus this gives me this distance right here. So now I can equate all these areas. So I can say that a1 is equal to 1 times x. So it's simply 1 multiplied times x. A2 is going to be equal to t minus x times 1, so 1 times t minus x. A3 is going to be equal to 1 half the base times the height, so 1 half the base, which is x, and the height would be y. A4 will be defined as t minus x times y, so that would be t minus x times y, and A5 would be half the base, which is t minus x, times the height, which is 6 minus y. So now we have defined all five areas in terms of t, x, and y, but that's three variables, which is too much. So now we can have another relationship. We can see that there's congruent triangles, that this height relative to this length is equal to this height relative to this length. In other words, I can say that y to x, the ratio of y over x, must equal the ratio of 6 over t, because this is t, this is 6, this is y, this is x, which means that I can take y and replace it by 6x over t. So now I have a way to get rid of any y's in my equations. So 
that means that a3, instead of writing it as 1 half x times y, I can write it as 1 half x times, and y is 6x over t. So that means that this is equal to 3x squared over t. So I have a new value for a3 in terms of x and t, and y is no longer necessary. I can do the same for a4. a4 can now be written as t minus x times y, so that's t minus x. And instead of y, I can write this as 6x over t. So that means that this can be written as 6x minus 6x squared over t. And that would be a4. And finally, a5 can now be written as a5 can now be written as 1 half times t minus x times 6 minus, instead of y, we write 6x over t. And then if we multiply this out, well, do we need to multiply that? Yeah, we might as well. a5 is equal to 6 times, so we have 6 times t, that's 6t, divided by 2, that's 3t. 6 times that, that would be minus 3x. This times this, we get uh, the t's cancel. We get minus times a minus, no, plus times a minus, that's minus t's cancel. I get minus 3x. And then this two together, that would be um, plus 3x squared, plus 3x squared over t. So this is how we can then define a5. So we have a3, a4, and a5 only in terms of x and t. So now I can take this equation and set those two equal to each other. So now we'll have an equation relating x to t, which is nice. So a1, that would be x. So we have x plus a3, which is 3x squared over 2, uh, over t, 3x squared over t, is equal to a2, which is t minus x, plus a4. a4 is right here, which is 6x minus 6x squared over t, plus a5, which is plus 3t, minus 3x minus 3x, which is minus 6x, and plus 3x squared over t. So, can I simplify some things? Yes, I can, because I have a 3x squared over t and a 3x squared over t, so those cancel out. Have a 6x minus 6x, those cancel out. And let's see here, now I can combine some terms. I can make the minus x move it over here, that becomes 2x. So I have 2x is equal to t plus 3t, which is 4t, and uh, minus 6x squared over t. So now I'm going to write that as a quadratic equation, all on one side. So I end up with 6 over tx squared minus or plus 2x minus 4t is equal to 0. So here's my quadratic equation. Now, I can solve for x by solving it as a quadratic equation. So I can say that x is equal to minus b, which is minus 2, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 2 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 6 over t, times c, which is a minus 4t. All divided by 2a, 2a that would be 12 over t. All right, simplifying that, notice luckily that the t's cancel here, and we have x is equal to minus 2 plus or minus the square root of, so that's 24 times 4, which is 96, the minus signs cancel out, plus 4, that's 100, Oop. divided by 12 over t. So that means that this is equal to, notice if we take the negatives, you don't get a good answer because you can't have a negative x value. So plus the square root of 100 is 10, so 10 minus 2, which is 8, times t over 12, which is equal to 2 thirds t. So in other words, x is equal to 2 thirds t. Which means that it takes 2 thirds of the time to cover 
half the distance. All right, so now half the distance, let's see here, half the distance. Do we have half the distance? Hmm, well, half the distance would be the sum of a1 plus a3, right? That's half the distance. So distance, half the distance is equal to a1 plus a3. And a1 is equal to x. And a3 is equal to 1 half x times a, but that would be equal to 3x squared over t. That would be half the distance. But remember that x is equal to 2 thirds t, so that means that this is equal to 2 thirds t plus 3 times 2 thirds t squared over t. Okay, I need some lines here so we don't get too confused. So simplifying that, that would be 9 divided by 9, that would be uh, 1 third, that would be 4 thirds t squared, but the t cancels out, so we have that's equal to 2 thirds t plus 4 thirds t, which is equal to 6 thirds t, which is equal to 2t. So half the distance can be expressed in terms of time as 2 times the total time. So let's plug that in here. So this is equal to 2 times t divided by the half time for t. In other words, the amount of time that it takes to go half the distance, which is x, which is 2 thirds t. So divide that by 2 thirds t. The t's cancel out, so this is 2 times 3 over 2, which is equal to 3. And of course, the units are going to be meters per second because we're talking about the average velocity. So it turns out the average velocity that the object will have going from 1 meter per second to 7 meters per second, but over only half the distance traveled is going to be equal to 3 meters per second. A bit messy, but it works. This is a good method. It's called the graphical method. And simply by relating the areas underneath the curve together that a1 plus a3 must equal a2 plus a4 plus a5, we can express all the areas in terms of x, y, and t. And then because we have the relationship between y and x and t, we can get rid of the y. So then we only have, then we take this equation, we set the two areas equal to each other. Then we have it in terms of only x and t, so we simplify that, we end up with a quadratic equation. We solve for x in terms of t, so we know that the amount of time that it takes to reach half the distance is two-thirds of the total time. <coughs> Excuse me. Then what we do is we find the distance in terms of t, the time in terms of t, divide one by the other, and we end up with three meters per second. It is quite a problem but it can be solved, and at least that's one of the ways in which we can get to the answer. And that is how it's done. What's the other method? Well, I'll have to work that one out. <laughs> I haven't done that yet.